I really try to talk a little bit about one part of uh, cultural industries, which is uh, known as a global one uh, from one side, which means that specific nature of this cultural industry allows us to look at the market as a whole world sometimes, though other cultural industries will, will oppose me as well, and others as well, computer games and so on, but nevertheless, it's even in a non-digital world, film industry was understood like a global uh, market, but at the same time, uh, the specific nature of uh, film industry as a creative in industry has a lot of obstacles uh, for representatives from small markets, and uh, they should overcome uh, a number of challenges uh, different than those uh, colleagues from bigger markets, from uh, bigger countries. And plus, uh, film industry as such, uh, when we talk from perspective of uh, economics, economics uh, it's not in itself the model of, of doing that business based on very uh, big sustainability. And all the time, uh, the industry should fight for being sustainable. And the solutions are different, though the industry seems uh, the same in bigger or smaller countries. But there are some, some challenges uh, they need to meet. So, uh, by the way, that is, I'll show several pictures, not too much, but uh, those pictures are connected with the Lithuanian film industry. And there you see uh, the sound stage uh, with the green screen. Those who are not connected with the audiovisual sector, it means that there you can film a scene in New York. And after that, after uh, the, uh, uh, the editing, it will look like it is done in New York. So that is film is about vision. So, uh, so this is uh, the place which uh, recently was opened in Lithuania. So it means that this is part of economical action. But uh, that is first uh, challenge uh, when small markets need to have uh, a lot of things in place, the same things which exist in bigger markets. So it means the cost of the industry is quite high. Another thing is uh, though the perspective is global in general, <coughs> but uh, we know that domination of US majors uh, is not so friendly environment for independent films, even for independent US films, I'm not talking about <coughs> Lithuanian, Latvian, or Estonian films. So small markets, small language, distribution possibilities are not so, uh, so perfect. Uh, and uh, taking such a high risk, film industry in small market uh, has relatively low reward for that if they win. So, uh, many films are produced, that is a positive thing, but at the same time, we just have European film agency directors discussion whether we in Europe produce too many films. And from an economical point of view, that is a legal question. And in this case, uh, though I, today I will talk more from an economic point of view, but in general, we speak about film industry, about film as a culture. So it means it's not uh, the case that there is too much culture. Simply from an economical point of view, we produce every year more than 1,000 films, so it means somebody has to look at uh, to those films. And somehow, distribution uh, system should work in order to reward those people who are involved in uh, this creative business. Nevertheless, uh, there are some economical benefits which uh, argue for the state support because uh, uh, from what you know in differently from Hollywood and Bollywood in most uh, countries uh, in the world film industry is supported by the state by the public with the public money so there are reasons which are uh, described in a UK based consultancy report which was done in 2012 
by Augsburg SPI company when evaluating the, the models of uh, film businesses in different countries so all over the world. So there are reasons why, uh, based on, on those reasons, which are economical benefits, uh, countries support or governments support film industry. I'm not going to read them, but actually you look at them and see that a lot of things could be beneficial for the economy uh, from the economical point of view if they will work. And from what I tell to you uh, in the next few minutes, you will see that even in a small market, you could have a big ambitions and you could meet those uh, economical requirements to be uh, successful and to show your effectiveness. So, several slides about, uh, and that is uh, uh, still from uh, the animation feature film, Lithuanian film, which is going to be screened this autumn. Uh, the story for children, but several, several numbers about the uh, film sector in Lithuania. So, please remember that we are three million nations. So uh, when colleagues were talking about that uh, two percent from the GDP for defense is not so big amount, but it means all other amounts are not so big as well. The percentage is quite high. So in this case, we speak about small country. Uh, last year, we have forty films uh, produced uh, successfully from the beginning to the end, and out of them, fifteen were screened in cinemas. So we have official distribution. Uh, this year we have uh, 75 production companies which applied for us at the Indian Film Center for state support. So it reflects the amount of players in audiovisual industry. I would tell that one thing which shows that uh, in Lithuania film industry is understood like a creative industry which, which, is, uh, which could exist with uh, uh, some economical instruments also. So tax incentive, which is the truth now for, for already quite a year in, in neighboring Latvia. And uh, this year, in Latvia, this tax incentive was even it, it increased, uh, expand, expanded, so to say. So this is first year when, uh, when Lithuania also have tax incentive, which means that you can get up to 20% uh, incentive uh, if you shoot in Lithuania, that is, this is applicable, applicable to both to international and national productions. So uh, it is a long process, those countries who have, and the UK is especially experience in that case, but still we have people, uh, producers who are interested and in, from this long list, which could be a uh, plum, uh, because it reflects interest of the companies which already expressed or did scouting or other activities. First three projects already are in place. Uh, last week I just signed the investor's uh, certificate for production uh, done in Lithuania, Lithuania national production. We have Finnish project and uh, we have Russian project. They are shooting film about First World War. Uh, so, and the contract was done in a wedding. So, so uh, this is the way how a uh, small market industry could attract additional services and could uh, become sustainable and could show economical effect and uh, ensure the uh, possibilities for, people, uh, for creative people to work at home. What is the future? Uh, from what we see now, actually, uh, I'm sure that uh, the, the we need to, to stabilize and to, or to increase national film share because uh, film industry is viable when it, it is accepted at home first and after that you can go to international pro uh, projects. Increased international regional co-production because that is an answer to increased costs and to problems with uh, distribution and other challenges which meet uh, the sector. Better national and international uh, distribution, and that is a problem not only for us or a small market, that is a problem also for big market because film industry due to digital age changes a lot. And there are no final answers, there are different uh, ideas, but no final answers how this to be done more effective. 
and due to tax incentive and increase in international cooperation to have highly developed film services sector in the future, which would be for others fun to work at and to get the uh, quality results. So the last slide, uh, it's, it's also about cinema and film, because today, the evening, we have national film awards in Vilnius after two hours. So first year, uh, during those 10 years of being part of EU and, uh, and NATO, we had a real intrigue who is going to, uh, who is going to win. Because before that, unfortunately, we have two or three competitors and the winner usually was very clear. So this year we have possibility to argue, to debate. And that will happen this evening. So thank you for your attention. Uh, I will start by saying that as the Minister of Culture as of a small but culturally diverse and rich country, I consider the creative industries as one of the keys to implementing a new paradigm in the culture policy of the contemporary Latvia. Uh, the creative industries is an important and growing field, both intellectually and in, poli and in policy terms. For example, the UN Creative Economy, Economy Report 2013 uh, is an e excellent showcase for all that creative economy can encompass all over the world. Although the very idea of the creative industries is comparatively new, I consider it is the most complex and changing concept both in the discourse of culture and the economy, mostly because it's in the disciplinary nature uh, as well as its strong linkage to the dynamism of uh, the information and communication technologies. <coughs> on the creative industries agenda in Latvia and our Baltic neighbors, Estonia and Lithuania date back to the beginning of 2000, and when countries like the UK, uh, through the British Council and the Nordic Council, uh, and the Nordic countries through the Nordic Council of Ministers and, and the Danish Cultural Institute, have played a remarkable role in promoting the creative industries concept in many countries and their contribution in providing expertise and methodological assistance in mapping and endeavors cannot be overestimated in the Baltic countries either. As a result, around 10 years ago, the ministries of culture in all three countries assessed the opportunity to adopt the definition and content of the creative industry into their cultural policy agendas. So the introduction of the creative industries concept into the public policy debates in the Baltic countries opened a new perspective for deepening comprehension of the social and economic value of culture that consequently led to wider political recognition and the integration of culture and creative industry, industries into national development strategies and plans. And let me mention here just one document which is uh, important in Latvia, it's a state long-term sustainable development strategy, Latvia 2030, that puts an emphasis on the transition process of the global economy, that is reorientation from resource-consuming industry to creative industry, uh, the fundamental resources of which is intangible, creativity, intuition, uh, imagination, Courage, uh, particularly courage uh, to take a risk. Uh, these are qualities uh, which can be adopted and promoted by and uh, through culture and education. Moreover, the recognition of the creative industries in the Baltic countries facilitates uh, the implementation of new measures uh, for the creative sector and for the support of the creative sector. Uh, in the framework of the EU uh, structural funds since 2007. Currently, we are uh, hardly working on the planning of the next uh, EU, um, uh, EU structural funds. Um, during the decade in Latvia, the aforementioned political and financial activities have uh, led us to some positive results, such as such as an establishment network of creative industries, incubators, and hubs, the development of creative 
waters by regenerating uh, the complexes of historical buildings, establishing new creative enterprises and startups, as well as expanding <coughs> the network of creative cities. The Baltic Film and Media School should be mentioned among the achievements of the creative industries in the Baltics, and I believe my colleague from Estonia will tell more about it. Uh, at a local level, uh, let me mention the Riga Film Fund, established in 2010. Um, and, and what is interesting about this fund that it is a municipal fund of the Riga City Council for financing film projects shot in Riga. And the program is open to uh, Latvian and foreign productions planning to shoot in Riga, and its objective is to encourage foreign investment, create new jobs, develop the Latvian film industry, and of course to promote Riga internationally. Uh, with regard to the creative enterprises, uh, we can count several success stories we as a small country can be truly proud of. I will share some of them with you. In the recent three uh, years, Latin companies have been awarded with a prestige Red Dot Design Award. As you might know, let me mention here the most innovative product in Latvia. Um, and it's uh, Amber's red socks, you see, on the board. Uh, these socks, uh, with a healing uh, effect, represent a unique innovation example, uh, which is a result uh, of combination between design, science, medicine, cultural heritage, and education. And uh, there is really huge interest about this technology and the uh, product uh, from all around the world. Huh? I will uh, finish by saying uh, that, uh, that uh, mm, it's very important uh, um, that we take into account one more precondition for the sustainable uh, growth of the creative economy, which should not be underestimated, because quite often we talk only about the production, about the dissemination of the creative industries, products, uh, but in the context of increasing uh, globalization and global competition, uh, it's very important that we um, work on the awareness raising and education of people, because a smart uh, consumer of, uh, of the creative products, it's, it's, it's really uh, crucial uh, to uh, promote our industries uh, in our small markets. Uh. And uh, the one way how we uh, work in Latvia since 2011 uh, to raise awareness uh, of, of the creative products and creative industry, creative economy issues, is uh, Creativity Week uh, Rally. Uh, Rally means create. Uh, this year uh, um, we have set uh, all, uh, design thinking and design as overarching uh, theme for this week. And as you know, uh, next uh, um, uh, year, Latvia is, uh, will carry the EU presidency and uh, we would like to develop this Creativity Week into the cooperation platform uh, for uh, um, sharing ideas and uh, good, uh, good, uh, good experiences uh, um, uh, from all over the uh, European Union. So, um, I thank you very much for your attention. And, um, thank you very much well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for inviting me. It's always a pleasure to be in London, which is my favorite city, and I try to be here as often as possible, so thank you very much for inviting. I will talk about creative economies in Estonia, the Estonian way, throughout the last 10 years. Now, I will give you one example um, in, in the creative industries field, and this example comes from the quite traditional uh, field uh, called museums. So I have entitled my presentation, Who Really Needs Creative Industries? And I would answer it myself, nobody. Creative industries have been widely discussed over the last 10 years and many have argued that there is no need to put together such field as film, food, uh, libraries. What is the need to put these things together, these uh, areas together? Um, and um, 
And some have, have even said that uh, creative industries and all this will, will destroy and violate the, the real culture. And some have said that, uh, that this term creative industries is kind of an excuse for politicians to cut down the support to, uh, to the real artists. Uh, so, um, and the artists cannot be businessmen. So the, the question is, who needs the creative industries really and why it is for? When I go to the history lesson, because I work at the museum, I have to talk to you a little bit about the history as well. Well, during the Soviet period, the, um, the artists were very well treated, I would, I would say. Um, but you needed the license to buy a car, for example, and there were artist unions who provided these licenses. Um, there were special apartments for artists, and these apartment blocks were situated in the best part of the city. Um, and there were special organizations who took care of selling the products. So once Estonia got it in its independence, I think a lot of artists found uh, their position in the free market uh, in a quite bad situation. The free market was opened, and once you didn't have these wonderful organizations who took care of you. So, where Estonia was in the beginning of last century, about 10 years after the independence, um, the, um, the special research was carried out and, uh, uh, in, the, in the, um, the beginning of the century. And, and um, well, here are, here are some of the uh, results from the first survey that, uh, that the, the support system was very weak. Uh, there was little cooperation and the awareness was almost zero. So I think that's something that, uh, that uh, all the 40 countries could say, and as the Ministry of Latvia previously told, uh, I found quite similar situation uh, in Estonia. So what the Estonia did was Estonia really put the creative industry part of the uh, strategy for uh, European structural funds. Um, and the main focus was to, um, was to increase the number of enterprises uh, in, the, in this creative industries field and to raise the, uh, the growth or, or to support the growth of, of these companies. So there were uh, different measures and I've divided these measures into three categories. There was um, to support the creative industries. So, First, the first type of measures were not specific measures, uh, and by that I mean that there was, um, for example, there was cluster program, um, and all the companies and organizations could apply for that. Either they were from the agricultural field, from the IT field, whatever the field. So it was kind of a support measures that all companies could apply, and including the, the creative industry sector. So there was uh, sector-specific measures, uh, and these sector-specific measures were uh, meant for creating uh, creative centers, creative hubs, um, and, uh, and I would say that today we have about 10 creative centers, creative uh, incubators, creative hubs in Estonia, which is quite much because uh, Estonia is very small, we have only 1.3 million people, so, uh, so it's, it's quite a good number. So there was specific measures, support measures for, for this creative industry sector. And of course, the problem was the awareness, um, and uh, I will talk a little bit more about the awareness, what we did in this field. So, um, the awareness, what the creative industry is, and why it is useful, and who needs it was, was as I said, almost zero. So we created um, such an initiative that we named Creative Estonia. Uh, and the program called Creative Estonia is to raise the awareness of, of creative industries. There are um, three principal um, operations uh, in this program. The first is communication. The communication, and by communication I mean that we have uh, a special uh, websites for uh, creative industries where you could find all the information that is related to this uh, field. Um, we have a lot of books, we have a lot of leaf, uh, materials, leaflets, whatever. And, and, the, and the main thing is to really explain what the creative industries is, what is the usefulness of it, 
and uh, and how the uh, and to to really uh, grow the number of, of companies in this field. Um, <clears throat> So, and we also, in this Creative Estonia, we also offer media support and we do a lot of work with media, with mass media, um, with journalists, um, to, to, um, to educate them, I would, I would say. And also, uh, we uh, do a work with policy makers, because they don't know uh, what the creative industry is really is uh, either. So, we can say that now they know because of the work, but if we take five years ago, the awareness was very low. We have uh, different web-based services, um, so it means that we have, for example, a product development program that lasts nine months, so you enter this program with an idea to create a product, uh, and you exit with, with, with a real product, uh, which you can sell on the market. Uh, we have online uh, advice service, we have uh, uh, a promotional environment. If you don't want to create your own website, you could uh, you could uh, use our website to sell your products. So these are web-based services that we provide. These are extras for these business centers, business incubators, which are quite local ones. So the business incubators and centers are in the big cities, but if you are living outskirts or in the uh, in the countryside. We think that you need some kind of support as well. And we have had during these five years a lot of events and trainings, um, seminars. Mm, I think that we have had around 5,000 participants all together and around uh, more than 50 events. Uh, so we have, uh, for example, we have had trainings for um, about marketing. Uh, we have had uh, international speakers. Uh, uh, for example, from Great Britain as well, thanks to the British Council. Uh, and I, I don't know why it is so, but uh, if you want somebody to tell the truth, ask a foreigner to come. So the local ones, if, if the local ones are, are telling, that's, that's half true, but if the foreigner tells the same story, it's the truth. So we have had a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, foreign uh, speakers. Uh, we had, and uh, as I said, in the mapping was that uh, it was very low cooperation, so we have put together in the same room different sectors inside the creative industries, uh, sectors that doesn't uh, um, match together so much, for example, uh, I don't know, film and libraries, uh, and, uh, and, and done such kind of events to, to really enhance the, the cooperation. So, where we are at the moment, what is the current situation? Uh, Estonia is one of the few countries in the in the Europe that has really mapped the creative industries uh, in a regular basis. Uh, so if we look at the data, we see that the, the, what, what was the aim of, of, of all these support measures? As I said, the aim was to uh, grow the number of, uh, of enterprises, grow the number of companies. And as, if you look at the statistics, you see that we have really uh, achieved this uh, Aim. The, the number of organizations have, have doubled or more than doubled from, uh, from 3,000 uh, up to 7,000, which is a nice increase. Uh, the, the little bit bad point is that the, uh, the percentages or the input to the GDP have, well, in the numbers it have increased, but it, in the process it, it doesn't have increased so much. So we could say that the, uh, that, uh, the numbers have increased but the, the uh, benefits or the input to the GDP haven't so much as we expected. But all in all, if we take the last 10 years and the, the, the creative industry sector, I think that if we talk about creative industries in Estonia, we don't have to explain so much what it is. Uh, we rather are in the next step where we see that uh, uh, the, the cooperation uh, and, and these kind of topics are more uh, important. And of course the question how to proceed that the, the previous speaker told this is also a question in Estonia as well. So it was very brief, uh, very briefly where we were in Estonia uh, in terms of creative industries and where we are at the moment. Uh, I, I tried to uh, manage within eight minutes to, uh, with, with this so it's, it's really a very brief. 
So I promised you to uh, tell uh, about one example of, of a field of museums where I've been uh, in the last five years. And uh, the museum that I'm going to talk to you uh, about is a, is a seaplane harbor, this uh, famous speech, the speech that was entitled, I have a dream. Um, the Russian Tsar, Nikolai II, had a dream as well. He had a dream, and if you, are, if you are a Russian Tsar, you could fulfill your dreams quite certainly. Uh, Estonia was part of, a, in the last, beginning of last century, um, Estonia was part of the Russian Empire. And the, the Russian Emperor Nikolai II had a dream to build a place for seaplanes. As the, the capital city of the empire was back then San Petersburg. Uh, and uh, the Tsar decided to, uh, to build a huge protection system to, be, uh, to protect the capital city, uh, San Petersburg. And, and part of this was also Tallinn, part of this protection system. And therefore, uh, they decided to build a special place for, uh, for seaplanes. So the construction was carried out in 1916 and 1917. Uh, and the place was for seaplanes. <coughs> we, when Estonia Maritime Museum discovered this place uh, in mid, uh, uh, about 2005 to uh, 2006, uh, we had the dream to restore the historical and unique hangars. And I will show a couple of pictures in what shape the hangars were really uh, in, in, in these years. The construction was, was so heavily corrugated that it was in the, in the end of collapsing. So once we started the restoration, there was even a, a, a hole in the a dome with a measure of 2 meters times 2 meters. So, so the, the conditions was, was really very, very uh, bad. Um, and, um, and we had the dream to restore it. But not only restore this building, uh, we had the dream to create a really an exciting museum. The museum where families want to come back, where, where the children are those who are saying that I want to go back. And I must say that I, I admire the British museums. I, I, well, I was here with my management team a couple of years ago and I said there was a queue in the museum. And I said I want to have a queue in my museum as well, in our museum. Um, before we open the museum. So, and the children are really the ones who are, who are saying that we want to go to the museum. So we had the dream to create such a museum in Estonia. And this was something not very, uh, not very common uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, is have our dreams come true, uh, have this dream to restore the building, the dream to create a museum that is exciting, is for families have come true? Yes, we have. Uh, we have created a museum, um, we, we opened the museum two years ago in May, so it's uh, some few weeks uh, till we uh, celebrate our second anniversary. And during this period we have had more than 740,000 visitors. It's uh, more than half of the Estonian population within two years. And I, when preparing this presentation I did a little mathematics uh, about the economic uh, Economical impacts of, of the museum, and if we take the number of, of visitors, and if we uh, if we take the average uh, price of the tickets, we get that the, the museum have uh, created a value of about five million euros, uh, at plus additionally the, the food and catering, the shopping, and so on. So this is one uh, number. The second number is is that about forty five. A uh, percent of our visitors are tourists, and this number is increasing. The percentage is increasing. So, if you take the number, we get that more than uh, more than three hundred thousand uh, tourists have visited, and the average, uh, according again to statistics, the average uh, uh, spendings per day is about um, two hundred euros, and the average time in Tallinn is about two days. So, if we take that that. Let's imagine that all those people who have come to Tallinn have been for uh, have come because of this museum. We get that the economical benefit have been more than 130 million euros. Of course, not all those 300,000 have come to Estonia because of this museum. But uh, if we take only one, two, or three percent, we get even millions. 
So, so this is something that, if we talk about the museums, for example, in this trade industry, we think about culture and we left somehow apart the economical side. It's not true. We should take into consideration also the economical part. So, uh, so the museum have been really successful in terms of, uh, of, of giving, the, uh, giving back the economical investment. Uh, the investment was only 15 million euros. And I, when I have guests in, my, in our <coughs> museum, I always have to say that I was at the English lessons and I know what's the difference between one five and five zero. Uh, and it was all, because they can't imagine how we could do this in 15 million euros, uh, which is a bit, about a little bit more than uh, 10 million pounds. Um, we also got the European Nostra Award, which is the highest price uh, for cultural heritage. Uh, we got the European Nostra Grand Prix, so we have really preserved the, the, the bill. So who needs creative industries? And I will answer now, everybody needs. Uh, because creative industry is so much uh, connected with all the other industries. Uh, the cultural entrepreneurship is, is something that is a mindset. And uh, I think that, that with, with good examples in Estonia, and I, I, I was telling you one example, we have changed the mindset, uh, how we think about creative industries and cultural and, and